What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be going over that win against Adelaide. So let's run that intro, jump straight into it. So just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on Twitch. I know I haven't been streaming for, um, <clears throat> haven't done a lot of streaming at the moment, but I've got a new setup. I've got one of those Elgato card capture things, so it's going to be a little bit better, a little bit smoother, and it's going to look a lot better. So we'll get back to that Grimsby Town Collingwood mashup, and we'll be playing some other games as well. So definitely follow me on Twitch, Swoop Luke, Instagram, Swoop Luke, Twitter, Swoop Luke, TikTok, Swoop Luke, and if you're a returning sweeper, thank you so much for joining us, and if you are a new sweeper, thank you so much for coming and checking me out. Um, it's a community here, it's not just me, all your input is so valid and I really do appreciate it, even if I'm slow to get back to most of you, I really do appreciate it still, but um, if you enjoy what you're, what you're watching, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for notifications when I post videos. Anyway, let's get on to this review. So, as you all are well aware, that first half was absolutely atrocious. Adelaide were last on the ladder, not were, they, they still are last on the ladder, and we're pushing for a top eight spot. Um, hopefully a top four finish as well. But what we put up in that first half was absolutely ridiculous. We lost our first first quarter for the year against Adelaide. Then we lost the second quarter. We lost that entire first half. Adelaide, let me put it into perspective for you, have only won three quarters of football this season. The first one against the Sydney Swans. Uh, I think that was a first quarter or something. And two against us in that first half. So you can see that. We were just not playing anywhere near the level that we should be. And it was a tale of two halves and two different Collingwood teams pre-half um, time and post-half time. It was another case of the midfield and the forwards lacking just entire connection going forward. Taylor Adams was missing uh, hits going in forward. You know, Crisp at the start couldn't get them. Just none of our midfielders weren't generating enough shots uh, in that first half, but when they were getting shots to forwards, they were missing. So it's just a battle of wills at the moment. Um, but, you know, in saying that, our second half was a thousand times better than it has been in the last couple of games. We came out hard. We actually seemed to have a game plan. You know, Buckley in his press conference said that we started being a little bit more daring with the football, which is... So good to see. We stopped this little chipping, kicking around and slow movement. It was very quick football, reminiscent of 2018, reminiscent of uh, times at 2019 and something that we haven't seen since maybe the Bulldogs and Richmond game in round one and round two were daring, you know, to strip words from Buckley's mouth. Very daring, fast. And when you have that fast delivery, Adelaide don't have the chance to get 14 players into their back line. Gives your forwards a better chance. Forwards a better chance to mark the ball, better chance to over the top and kick a goal. And that's exactly what happened. In that first half, we kicked two goals. In that second half, we kicked eight goals, finishing the game with 10 goals too, which is very different to the two goals, 10 that we kicked up until half time last week against uh, the Sydney Swans. So you can so it shows that we are accurate um, in front of goal when we want to be. But, you know, obviously that doesn't show the five kicks at goal that were falling short or on the full. But 10 goals too was a great return. So, like I said, tale of two halves. The first thing that I liked was our intent coming out of half time. Lots of run, lots of dash, which is pretty much just running with a bit of pizzazz. Um, lots of, you know, taking the game on, quick entries into the 50, and actually hitting inside 50 targets, which is something that we haven't been able to do in the first half and in the previous games before this one. And I think this can be a really great springboard for the rest of our season. Absolutely loving what Trey Rusco is bringing to this team. I said it in um, a video before, and I said it on Twitter again. He's reminded me of the 2018 forward line that we had, uh, you know, with those guys in there. He's an unknown commodity uh, in, the, in the Collingwood team, uh, in the AFL sort of world. No one really knew where he was going to play. Chuck him in the forward line, kicks two goals, one, one goal, three last week. If he can kick a little bit more straight up, he'll be kicking two, three goals every week. And it's something that, He's an odd size, so not you can't really uh, man up on him well. Lots of energy, lots of excitement, kind of like Steve Owen Degoli in 2018, and I'm absolutely here for it. I also love how Taylor Adams was um, 
attacking the ball and positioning himself. Yes, you know, I mentioned earlier that he wasn't miss hitting targets inside 50. He went at about 56% for, I think, 27 disposals. Um, but you can start kind of forgiving that because he's putting that effort, putting that second effort in. Um, you know, and someone like a Trelaw, for example, yes, he can grab the ball, accumulate the ball, but he misses those shots. But he doesn't give you what Adams gives you, which is that grunt, that in and under. And I absolutely love it. And like I said, I think in my Instagram live, is that he's really coming to his own after being thrust into that captaincy role in um, the West Coast game when Pendles pulled out. Yes, he wasn't captain last week. Uh, sorry, last game. But you can see that he's starting to become that on-field leader now that Pendles isn't there. And I am absolutely love it. So the things that I disliked during this game was that first half. Like I said, it was two halves of football, two very different Collingwood sides. I feel like that half of football that we played was exactly how we've been playing, you know, since that West Coast game. Slow footy, slow tempo, not being daring, not being quick, chipping it around, over handballing, not being able to hit um, inside 50 targets. And it's like at halftime, Buckley just said, nah, stuff this game plan, let's go with a whole new one, because it was like a whole different team after half time. We can't afford those lapses against good opposition like Port Adelaide or Brisbane or even, you know, Richmond again. We have to get that sort of slow tempo out. I, I get it. Slow tempo football needs to be done. That defensive football needs to be played, but not all the time. Our first option shouldn't be a kick backwards. It should be a kick forward, you know what I mean? The second thing that I didn't like, again, was that mid to forward connection. Too many times we were kicking it over the top of everyone, hoping for the best. I thought with Trelawna in this team, that would be gone, but it was still prevalent. And again, after halftime, that was fixed. So, like, I just can't get around how we've played two different Collingwood teams in one game of football. Another thing that I dislike is players playing out of position. In the first quarter, Jaden Stevenson, Josh Thomas, and Brody Majek were getting touches in our defensive 50. Like, literally, inside the defensive 50, they were getting touches. Of course, they don't have to be stay-at-home forwards, because no one plays as a real stay-at-home forward anymore. But Steve -O does his best work in that forward 50, not pushing him up the ground. Because if he's getting that ball, or Brody Majek's getting that ball at half-back, who's he kicking to? They should be the target up there, not themselves. They can't kick it to themselves. So I don't like players playing out of position. Like Travis Farco was playing at halfback. Chris May was playing at, um, you know, in the forward line. They should be switched. Chris May should be playing halfback, which is where he plays his best footy. And Travis Farco plays his best footy as a pressuring forward. They did end up making the switch, but could have been done um, sooner in the game. And it might have yielded different results in the half. Also, just wanted to give quick special shout-outs to Lyndon Dunn and Tim Broomhead on their comebacks, both out for over two years, and it was just amazing seeing them back on the field. Lyndon Dunn with that awesome goal to kind of spur us on in that um, in that game. One of our only goals for the um, first half, one of two, but awesome to see that goal. Boys getting around him and stuff. Broomhead didn't do a lot, but I still loved what he brought. Also, another special mention, because I can't fit it anywhere else, was Sire and Wills in the same team. They didn't have 30 disposals between them. They had about 28 and 11 tackles and a few clearances. They definitely can't play in the same team together, in my opinion. They both bring something to the table that the other one doesn't bring. Um, if they could merge, amazing, but they can't. Um, so I think going forward, I think we can only keep one of them, obviously, and I think it'll be Sire that we do end up keeping. So we're just going to go over some plays. Um, just wanted to make mention of the difference between the first quarter and um, or the first half and the second half. You see here, Josh Thomas grabs the ball. We haven't got a real zoomed out view, so we can't really see his options. But you can see him assessing here, you know, where the hell am I going to go? You see Roscoe makes the lead. He doesn't uh, accept that one. He ends up going long and high, which is what we've been doing all season, to... There's that one. I'm just going to pause it there. He ends up going to Rusko, but you can see that Rusko has three players um, already on him. Bad option, but then again, it looked like he had no option at all. So it's not Josh Thomas's fault. It kind of just has to be the game plan, and that's what we changed in the second half because that was absolutely disgraceful. We can't score goals with kicks in the 50 like that. 
This is another one that I, I want to show you guys. Um, so you can see that Adelaide have got control of the ball there, and I'm just going to pause it right uh, here. So you can see that there's, you know, from where Taylor Adams is, you got one, two, three, four, five, six players um, pretty much in the center of, of the ground on that flank, on that wing, uh, three Adelaide players. Now look how far those Collingwood players are to that number 36, who ended up creeping behind. So that was Josh Thomas's man. So what happens is Josh Thomas ends up going to the ball carrier, but so does Dacos, and no one covers that guy, lets him free roam. He gets the ball here, number 36. We don't press up. And luckily, they didn't get a goal out of this. But that's something that um, we're doing a little bit too much of, especially in that Adelaide game. Just those little decisions there that I'm sure that they can fine-tune. Just going to pause it right here. You can see there's about 13 or 14 Adelaide Crows uh, players in that defensive 50 and only a handful of Collingwood players. So who does he go to? He goes to Majacek, who is already two-on-one. And when I roll this clip, he'll be a three-on-one. Just a bad decision at a time when we really need to kick goals. Uh, it's just that chipping around the 50 before you go into that um, deep forward 50 because at the moment, we're outnumbered and we were never going to win this ball. The last play I want to bring up is this running carry by the Pies from halfback down to the 50. Adams gets the ball. Callum Brown takes it right through the middle. This is that dare and that flare we were talking about. Over the top to a one-on-two. Pretty much, pretty much a two-on-two. -two. Roscoe gets that ball and kicks a goal. And then, you know, we're, we're leading the game. And it's those little things like that where we changed from the first half to the second half that really sparked us and, um, you know, brought that dash, brought that flair from 2018-2019. So this is the last one here. I'm just going to pause it right here. So you can see Adams has the ball, right? Usually in the first half or in the last couple of games, that would be a long kick into the 50 uh, in hopes. Well, watch what Adam does now. He handballs it. Rupert Wills hands it off to Crisp. Crisp hits a target one-on-one. -on -one, not a one-on-three. One-on-one. Darcy Cameron easily takes that mark and goes back and kicks the goal. So all in all, I did like that second half of football. That first half, I was so frustrated. You can see it in my tweets. You can see it in my Instagram lives. And you all were as well. But if I had to grade that game... I'd give it a, a C plus at, at best, B minus maybe, just because it was two different halves of football. But that second half, I absolutely loved. Give me that dash. Give me that flair. Give me that pizzazz. Give me that spice. I'm all here for it. And so is everybody else in the Collingwood army. Um, we, we just need that. We need that. Not that slow start. We need that pizzazz. We turn around, we verse Melbourne in a couple days on Saturday, so that's going to be another insane game. Looks like Max Gorn won't play, but we'll leave that for the preview when I talk about the ins and outs and, and where we can win the game and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, if you've watched it this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment below. I love reading them, and I will reply eventually. So busy, COVID, etc., etc., etc. But anyways, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shackers, I'll sweep you later. Ooh la la.